But we've got, let's see, what else do we got? We got some storytelling by Deidre. She is super, super amazing. She's got, pay attention to her, y'all. She will take you on quite the adventure. Um, we also got some music by Wee Boogie, spinning on the decks a little bit later, and we've got a musical performance by Verse Soul. And then we also have our live video mix by William Stokes. And what's, what I appreciate so far about just the artists that we are, that we're featuring specifically for this first episode of Damn Digital is that these artists have been with us from the beginning, y'all. Like, they have, <laughs> like, well, like it. Right here real quick, because we need to know that she's literally the reason why Damn exists. Like, I <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that I would have a chance to perform with this one right here. Okay, let me take it back to Lauren real quick, but uh, we have to know that. No, for real, for real, for real. It's yo, so, so great. And while, while also I got you guys on here, I just want to let you guys know that we also have a Damn Events Venmo set up for tonight. So anything that you like to see, if you want to support the artist, all the proceeds from, our, from that Venmo will be going straight back to the artist. It's kind of just our little way of trying to support where we can give them, show them a little love. So let me throw that Venmo up right in the chat right now so you guys can show us some support over there. Also, um, in case you guys are wondering a little bit more about DAM events, generally most of our showcases have been in the Bay Area, but we've done a showcase out in LA. Hey, where I, I'm like, I'm the only one from <laughs> DAM events out in LA. We got, Fine. LA. Well, we got New York in the house though. Hold on, let me just shout out this one right here. New York, wait, is it coming? There she is. Hi, Nikki. Okay, I'm muting myself. Uh, she's been with us since day one, too. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh. New York. Uh, you guys, like, so damn events, we are, we are just so open to any artist from all different walks of life, all different cities, all different areas, all different vibes. Like, we're just about building a community and building this, like, awesome network of people that you can continue working with even past the point that we're at right now. Um, also, if anybody that is watching on Twitch right now, we do have a Zoom room set up. So if you want to show up on the damn digital screen, I will give you guys that Zoom room ID. Turn up with us, vibe with us, all that good stuff. It's all up in there too. So, do 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 do. Why don't we? Should we? Should we go on? Maybe. What are you thinking? How are we feeling? Yeah, let's go over to this one right over here. Um, Miss Deidre, Miss Storyteller, Miss Poet, Miss left me on stage when we the song and dancing, but it's okay because she's not a dancer, she's a poet. And a as long as you know. <laughs> and as long okay. as you know. So taking it over to Miss Deidre. <laughs> oh, ooh, hey. hey. How y'all doing? Um, so um tonight I am doing something a little different. Um I am sharing some pieces from my choreo poem, If You Give a Black Girl a Lemon. And a choreo poem is a form of dramatic expression that combines poetry, dance, music, and song. Um, the most like established or famous um, choreo poem that most people are familiar with is for colored girls who have considered suicide when the rainbow is enough. Um, and so again, my choreo poem is called If You Give a Black Girl a Lemon. And it's broken down into the voices of four women, um, Liz, Maya, Ruff, and the Bard, who also functions as like the narrator. And Liz, Maya, and Ruff, are named after lemons. Um, Liz is short for Lisbon. Maya is a play on Meyer, on Meyer lemons. And Ruff is, there's legit a lemon called Ruff. Um, so we just didn't change her name. And uh, you know, there's this, and so the play came about, the choreo poem came about because there's this like, proverbial phrase that says, if life gives you lemons, make lemonade. And in theory, it's a dope idea, but also life gave you a lemon. 
be grateful for the lemon. Like there are so many things and so many properties associated with lemons. Lemons can grow in any temperature. It's one of the only fruits um, that is available year round without manipulation, right? Like different, different types have seasons, but overall a lemon is available 365 days of the year. Um, they have medicinal properties. Uh, you add them to water and water suddenly becomes better. Like yep. it makes everything that, and water is, water's in these streets, like for real, for real, like giving you life. And you're going to add to this life giving source and make it better. Like lemons are just amazing. And if that isn't a metaphor or an allegory for black women, then I don't know what is. So um, tonight you will be hearing um, four different poems about love the way Maya sees it. And Maya is the youngest of the three lemons. Um, because a Meyer lemon was actually the last type of like the most common lemons to be discovered. It was like brought over in the 19th century from China. Um, and it's believed to be a hybrid of a, a lemon and a mandarin orange, which is why it's a little sweeter. So um, most of the time people like to use Meyers for like lemon bars and uh, it's often the lemon that is used, like that is consumed raw with like very little manipulation. So um, this first uh, poem um, is called Last of a Dying Breed or Maya as a Mother. In the event of your birth, you should know I did everything in my power to prevent your arrival. I gave my body to boys who were nothing more than temporary destinies, accepted the lust I thought I deserved, saved enough money to turn your world black should you, turn any, should you ever turn any stick blue. I planned your demise the way most would plan to celebrate your life, intricately, acutely aware of the responsibility I have sought the lovers, I have sought the arms of lovers from out of state, just so I wouldn't have to explain my emotional state. Should I ever have to put you down like the insurgent you are? My body is a war zone. No place for embryos or embraces that mean anything other than we will be in touch the next time I am bored. Boredom has given birth to many a thing. I am committed to making sure you are not one of them. I have remembered to take my birth control on days that I have forgotten to pray. Fallen asleep, fully clothed to make my escape into the night that much easier. After all, I am a lover, not a mother. So. Yes. So, um, also, so Maya is, um, in the choreo poem, Maya is a dancer. Um, Ruff is a minister and Liz is a singer. Um, and then the bard is just a little bit of everything because she's just that fly. Um, but um, Maya communicates a lot through movement, through body. Um, and society likes to attach stereotypes to women, especially women of color, who move and communicate through body, right? So um, Maya would probably be considered a thought. <laughs> or or, uh, or a young lady who doesn't necessarily deserve the standard idea of love because how she expresses love doesn't necessarily look like the standard idea of love. Also, side note, my internet may or may not 
go out? Should it should it go out? Run with it because Maya is also the character most likely to be silenced. Um, <laughs> so live experience, y'all. This is a live experience. <laughs> So this next poem is called Old Wives Tales or Maya Never Got a Fair Chance or Maya as a Granddaughter. My Nana says, beware of little boys in men clothing. Never loan out more than you can afford to give away. Never love a man like your grandfather. He got far too much love for one woman. My Nana says, you can't really trust a man with small ears or two first names. My Nana says, pay attention to those you give your heart to just in case you have to get it back. My Nana says, your grandfather had a way of loving people that left them crippled had a habit of letting loved ones walk in the middle of oncoming traffic. He was a tortured soul. Treated peace like a temporary thing. My Nana says, find a man who knows peace. Burn your hair when it falls out. Don't throw it away. The birds get a hold of it and use it for a nest. You're sure to go crazy. My Nana says, be careful not to break mirrors. Don't open umbrellas indoors. Never walk under a ladder. Do not split poles my nana says your grandfather didn't believe in love your grandfather's your grandfather was a man with too much love for one woman too much love for one family too much love for himself he gave it unnecessarily and didn't know what to do when it was given back my nana says you can tell what type of man a father will be what type of man a father will be based on how he treats his mother. She says you can tell how much a man loves you by where he allows you to walk on the sidewalk. My Nana says, pay attention to what causes a man to raise his voice. If it is only anger, take note of what he does with his hands. My Nana says my grandfather had a touch that almost made the abuse seem worth it. My Nana says, never argue with the fool at least not from a distance. People who can't mind their business might not be able to tell who is who. My Nana says, you never want to be mistaken for a fool. My Nana says, remember to thank God for everything, especially the things that don't look like blessings. Find a man that knows you are a blessing. My Nana says, she only mentioned the other woman once. Truth like that needs no repetition. My Nana says, Find the strength in every decision you make. You might be strong if you leave, but you are definitely gracious if you stay. My Nana says she didn't mind being a gracious woman. My Nana says the times were different back then. My Nana says lies often start out with the best of intentions. Make decisions you can live with, for they will surely follow you in death. Yes. Man. So, so um in reflecting and designing like these characters in these stories and the stories of black women that we wanted each character to tell, um we like <coughs> was looking at like already established people who like could be this character or who would resonate with this character. And we started assigning Zodiac signs Ooh. to characters. <laughs> oh. okay. And Maya is a Scorpio. <laughs> of course, of course. I don't know much about Scorpio. <laughs> Sounds like a Scorpio. <laughs> so do with that what you will. And this next poem is called Scorpio, or Maya Makes a Mistake. I had a habit of hurting people beyond healing. 
placing band-aids on bleeding bullet wounds and expecting them to still continue to fight for my affection. So don't label me your compass. I can barely keep myself pointed in the right direction. I don't have a lot of practice with apologies. Most are smart enough to be long gone before I'm ever comfortable enough to admit that I am wrong. And those unfortunate enough to stay have come to accept my walls as part of my charm, but you gave a mile and expected one back. But halfway is a place that I've never been, so how was I supposed to meet you there? S-O-R-R, why can't I pronounce some words as easily as I can spell them? This apology is seven heartbreaks, two botched engagements, and 138 prank calls overdue. A grocery bag full of good intentions that burst on a long walk to nowhere, and they say don't cry over spilled milk. So I will cry over the container. I'm sorry I broke you. Led you to believe you had a love deficiency when your only discrepancy lie in choosing me. You didn't deserve to be punished for that. Sometimes I wish I weren't your type, that my looks hadn't warranted a second look or that you had took a second to look closer and see the fine print. Warning, this woman has been broken and put back together mock-up style. Any display of maturity or emotion will cause her to crumble or to run. I chose to run, you chose to follow. And I'm sorry that I didn't care more that you scraped your knees when you fell for me. Our birth dates rendered us compatible long before we even met. I guess you could say we were written in the stars. And you shone so brightly that you didn't care that I was etched in shadow. But baby, I was all shadow. Bought into the cliche that opposites attract. I wanted a good relationship with a bad boy. And you were never good at pretending to be anyone other than who you were. So this apology... It's three loud arguments in a public setting and one if you died, I wouldn't cry because you never loved me anyway, playlist overdue. A loose eyebrow from a, a loose eyebrow mistaken for a loose eyelash that got placed between fingers and wished upon no wonder. It never came true. You didn't even know what part of me I was giving you and I'm sorry that you love with a lot more caution now. You have barriers around your heart now that you had to grow a tougher exterior. I'm sorry that thick skin does not stretch as easily as its counterparts. You are not as flexible as you used to be. And I know this apology sounds a lot like a love letter. I am not in love with you. At least I don't think I am. I'm just not that good at apologies. But if I were, I would have apologized when it still would have meant something. Ooh. Okay. Oh. So, um, th th all of the characters go through um, a evolution and, um, you know, Maya grows a little bit and, uh, she um once she grows she tries to return to um some people and some places that she's familiar with um but she also needs to as most of us do um needs to be honest about some things and why she wants to return to some things um or return to some people. Um, so this poem is called When Running Into Your Ex or Maya's Rules of Engagement. When running into your ex and his slightly attractive female companion, do not lie to yourself. She is extremely attractive and wearing the hell out of some shoes you can barely walk in. Decide to hate her on sight. Give her a smile that doesn't quite reach your eyes. Extend your hand in greeting. Sanitize it upon getting it back. Mispronounce her name on purpose. Lock eyes with a kind stranger and in 10 blinks or less say, hi, I know you don't know me, but I was wondering if you could come pretend to be my boyfriend so that this man doesn't think that I spent the last three years pining away from him, pining away for him. Thanks. 
find ways to bring your past successes up in conversation. Knock on wood, marble, glass, doors, any surface. One mm -hmm. of them is hiding the portal that transported you to this alternate universe. Begin confessing your sins. Loud enough for God to hear you over the machine gun firing of your heartbeat and rescue you from the hell you seem to have found yourself in. Pinch yourself. Upon confirming that you are in fact awake, compose yourself. Start giggling uncontrollably. Stop. Start again. Mispronounce her name once more for good measure. Walk away with all the dignity a woman such as yourself commands. You have just ensured that you will be the topic of their next conversation, but at least now it will be on your terms. When running into your ex and his slightly attractive female companion, do not lie to yourself. Yes, he has always been that attractive. Yes, he has always been that attentive. Yes, that dress makes you look fat and you probably shouldn't have worn it. And you definitely would not have worn it if you knew you would see him, but oh well, such is life. Stay in the present, be in the moment. Do not create mental montages of happier times as if the horrible ones did not exist. Do not lie to yourself. You do not want him back. You just don't want to see him happy. So close your eyes. Now open them. Remember he hadn't ran across your mind until he walked across your path. Remember, you've got something better at home. Be it a warm body or a warm coke of, cup of cocoa. Remember, upon parting ways, you wished him well and meant it. Remember, you vowed to become a better person and meant it. Do not allow yourself to forget the parts of you that lived for him died when the relationship did. If you must forget anything, forget who you were then. Remember who you are now. Remember your manners. That a smile is only genuine if it reaches your eyes. So let your pupils dance and your irises twinkle. Upon running into your ex and his very attractive female companion, keep your head high. Smile your best smile. Extend your hand in greeting and say something witty like, girl, you are rocking the hell out of them shoes. <laughs> yeah. And so for this final poem, um, I am not going to do it in its entirety, but since it is the title of the poem, I feel of the choreo poem, I feel like you should hear enough of it. So Black girls don't need lemons to make lemonade. Black girls arrive on earth with the ability to conjure to cool thirst. Survival be a black girl birthright so a black girl will make lemonade out of a lemon pill because she is a magician with the scraps. Because she is already used to bitter but don't know much about sour. Because ain't nobody ever told her lemonade was supposed to be sweet. Because ain't nobody given a black girl a whole lemon. If you give a black girl a lemon, she will probably ask about the tree. Is it bare? Is it still standing? Because black girls know all about being stripped bare and still standing. Were the gifts lemon, were the lemons gift or were they stolen? Did you pluck them from the branch or wait for them to fall? Are they bruised? Can a lemon be bruised? Because black girls know all about living with the flesh wound. Black girls know all about being devoured in spite of having a flesh wound. Black girls know all about having bodies and no ownership. If you give a black girl a lemon, she will probably get caught up in the familiar. The incorrectly assumed inadequacies that say that she can mimic sunshine and still not be enough to be the apple of someone's eye. So black girls don't need lemons to make lemonade. Black girls have been making something of themselves with less since the beginning of time. Uh, that's, my, that's my set. And that was a brief look at Maya, who is one of the lemons. And if you give a black girl a lemon. I feel like my
has kind of my spirit animal though. Like all the questions she has and everything. She's like, <laughs> exactly what I went through. And she's supposed to be what, like, how old is she supposed to be? So in the play, all of the lemons are centuries old. Maya just happens to be the youngest. They've okay. been around so since the beginning that, you know, of time. I'm still aged with the young soul. That's fine. Exactly. Okay. We'll take it. <laughs> anyway. Yo.